off. 2022's roulette race, betting big on DeFi and NFTs in the metaverse. Let's have on stage Belinda Lim, the co-founder of Avarta.io, who is moderating this panel. And joining her today is Ida Mok, co-founder and president of Weba, co-founder and chief legal officer of, of Fluidity Money. John G, co-founder and CEO of Matrix Port, and Thais Simonsen, co-founder of Decard and core member of Tajian. Ladies and gentlemen, tech trends such as Metaverse and Web3 are bridging the real and virtual worlds, transforming how we consume content and experience our day-to-day -day in completely new ways. Now, let's hear about it. And now, over to you, Belinda. Well, Hello, hi everyone. Uh, that was a very interesting talk on food. I hope you're ready for the more, I can't say more important, but different kind of important uh, topic on money. Are we interested about money? Yeah? <laughs> okay. So before I go into the topic, I think we have really good experts here today. I just wanted to have a sense of the room, right? So and have anyone heard of uh, NFT before? Can you raise your hand? Okay, there's a lot of people. How about uh, DeFi? Okay, and what about the metaverse? Okay, so today we are going to cover all three topics. Uh, so we are very glad to have our expert here. So before we go into the like the hard part of the panel, so maybe I'll just do a quick intro of myself and everybody can do that introduction. So hi, I'm Belinda again. Uh, I run a blockchain wallet company based out of Singapore, but targeted at Indonesia. So what I do is uh, I really, I'm focused in uh, bridging web two gamers to the web three space and trying to make the whole entire DeFi, GameFi, Metaverse space a safer place for everyone. So do you want, Ty, do you want to do a quick introduction? No, it's not working. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Thijs. I'm from Denmark originally. I live in Switzerland today. I've been part of founding Descartes AG, Descartes Group, and also a part of the Tachyon project. It's a layer one and layer zero project. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm John from Metrosport. Uh, Metrosport is a crypto bank. We provide one-stop financial service, include custody, trade, asset management, and uh, our headquarters is uh, in Singapore as well. Hi, Hi sorry. Uh, my name is Ida, and uh, I'm Malaysian, but based in Australia. Um, I am a co-founder of a couple of DeFi projects, but for today, Fluidity Money, and also the president of the Women in Blockchain Asia. So um, with regard to what I do, um, I focus on DeFi, whereby the product that we do is essentially is to encourage the growth of liquidity and to refine the quality of utility through governance um, in the DeFi market uh, through the use of our wrapped yield based tokens. So I know it's very, very technical, but we have time to talk about that later on. Okay, definitely. Uh, so before we jump in, I, I, there are some terms that when you do your self-introduction, I realized there are some terms throughout. Do you want to explain quickly what the layer zero and layer one? Like, do you want to do a quick intro? What, what I mean by it? Layer one and layer zero. Yeah, okay. So layer zero for me, that's... Uh the database, the network, the technologies, which is agnostic, which you can build on top. Then you have layer one systems like Bitcoin, Ethereum. It's like an ecosystem where there is certain rules and they use these technologies basically. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Okay. Sorry, shall we just start with the questions then? Okay, one second. Let me grab this out. Okay, so the first question I have is, I think we have spoken of the key common term just now, NFT and DeFi, right? And the term metaverse. So I just want to understand, like, how would this term influence the larger picture of the crypto industry? Should we start with the lady first? <laughs> okay. Um, I think a few things need to be put in context. Um, I know DeFi has a bad word in the current market, but DeFi, you can't run away from it. For NFT to actually work, to its best value, there is an element of DeFi that is involved. Same with metaverse, same with blockchain. Um, you can do it, divorce it out of it, 
But in order for it to scale, in order for it to grow, which is defined no, no, no. and broken down in terms of liquidity, volume, um, you need the DeFi aspect of it. What is DeFi then you're asking, okay? DeFi is essentially decentralized finance. So essentially is basically a method of financing, a method of a, a financial system. But the difference is that quite a lot of the functionary um, finance uh, mechanics that exist currently in our system can be taken away and reduced into codes. Um, what is the result of it? If you can take away certain intermediaries which have to pay for their office, staff, etc., etc., and then reduce it into a smart contract code, which is open sourced, what is the result of it? The product, the outcome of the product becomes cheaper because you don't have to add all these layers on it. And that is in a quick way to understand what DeFi is aiming to achieve. So as you can see, DeFi is not um, a standalone product. It exists in, and it moves into all, in all these areas. So to answer that one is that if you want NFT to grow, if you want a metaverse to grow, you need to think of a ways to commercialize it. And in a space of crypto, in a space of blockchain, that is where DeFi comes in. Divorce it out, it becomes a little stagnant. It doesn't grow in volume in that much. And, um, and because there's nothing to drive it. Because like it or not, as what Belinda says, people like to talk money. Money moves people. And DeFi is the money on the blockchain space. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, I will consider DeFi and uh, NFTs uh, as a basic uh, and uh, important component in crypto industry. Uh, at the first stage of crypto industry, when we talk about crypto, specifically Bitcoin, usually we will refer to a kind of asset. But uh, the appearance of uh, NFT and DeFi actually show us the potential that the blockchain technology can reshape the uh, financial market and uh, make the metaverse uh, possible. Uh, they describe a uh, kind of uh, paradigm that how uh, complex economic activity can, could be constructed in virtual world. And uh, I believe right now, and this paradigm will continue evolving. And what we experienced is just the beginning. So I think. I will consider NFT and DeFi, especially the appearance of NFT and DeFi, as a very important milestone in crypto industry. Before, it's a kind of an asset. After, crypto industry is not only a kind of an asset. Yeah, it's a good question. And I also think we need to put it into context. So, like, what is the purpose? Why are we doing it? And what is a metaverse? And um, I think it's much more than gaming. It's, it's actually connecting different kind of uh, universes with each other. It could be virtual or physical. And um, I think that's extremely exciting. And I think DeFi or NFTs there have an important role to play because it will be one of the methods which we connect those worlds. Um, and now I've been working with different projects, which is building our technology. One of them is actually trying to remove leakage and also uh, transparency within carbon uh, products, basically, and, and also ESG. There's been a lot of, you could say, greenwashing reports lately. And here we can actually use those components to create more transparency and at the same time, like, uh, create a, like an immersive experience and, and transferability to other ecosystems. And that's both provide liquidity transparency and, and yeah you could say that's actually a part of the metaverse it's it's much more than just gaming and and I, I like what is the like perspective of this it's very very hard to say as you say as well John it's it's starting now we don't know we are, we are trying to build it right it's it, it's a big bet basically yeah yeah and like I think the thing of metaverse everybody have like a concept of like you know ready player like one like everything is about gaming right and then I think the, the question is other than the hype right uh, what do you think in 2022, 
uh, how's the blockchain infrastructure? Is it scalable for whatever that we are trying? The promise of like the future. <laughs> do you think what, what do you think of the current like blockchain infrastructure? Are you looking at me? I'm guessing that you. Are yeah, we will me. start this way. <laughs> so like, okay, <laughs> you come back to me. <laughs> okay. Um. Um. Okay. Um. Essentially, the blockchain does have limitations. Let us be upfront about that. Okay. One of the major limitations is the amount of uh, information that you can actually capture there because it's actually limited um, because of the bit sizes and the block sizes. And when you have that kind of limitation, you've got power limitations, you've got scalability limi uh, limitations. So that is the reality of it. Unfortunately, of, um, in our industry, let's not even talk about the future finance alone there's so many transactions that is happening in real time, globally, and all this, and, and the current blockchain uh, in, is in many ways uh, can't cope with that. They, they can't cope with that, okay? Um, and so the current uh, way the blockchain has tried to um, uh, cope with all these things is that uh, um, they have learned a lot of the mistakes, okay? They have learned all these things. And, and now they are looking into new technology. So to give an example how they are going to cope with it is one of those things. Currently, in the blockchain, just imagine a road, okay? It's like a road and everything happens there. If you build the cars, the cars move there. If you break down, if you um, maintain the road, um, bicycles are there, everything, every single thing happens there. That's why there's congestion. And that's the problem with blockchain. So one of the things, the new technology that cope with it, again, uh, like I said, is nothing that the industry continues to grow, but the blockchain copes with it is the introduction is known as roll-ups. Roll-ups means basically this. If there is a particular need uh, of information that you, you require, that computation of that need can be taken offline. You don't need to calculate it. You don't need to solve it on the road itself. You can actually take it offline and do the calculation, solve the problem, and when you've done it, the outcome of it, you spit it back on the blockchain. So by doing that, you don't congest the blockchain. So the blockchain only records the information that is needed. So that's one um, clear example how they cope with this. I can go on, but I think I'm going to pass it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sure. It's a big question. Uh, I'm uh, actually not a technical guy, so I can't give you a very sure answer. Uh, personally, I believe that it could be solved. And actually, scaling is a very wrong history question and a very important question in this industry. I entered this industry almost 10 years, and uh, when I first time uh, heard uh, scaling is uh, almost uh, roughly seven years ago kind of this. So uh, I think it's a, it's a, I think uh, it will be some uh, similar situation, just like a uh, semiconductor industry with the boom of uh, smartphones and uh, with the uh, demand uh, for computing uh, capability, uh, the semiconductor developer super fast from uh, 170 nanometer to 5 nanometer and continue developing. So I personally believe this question uh, will be solved if the applications and the users uh, continue growing. It's a, I think a real care about is uh, when the enough uh, developers, uh, when the enough uh, actually willing to invest in this area. Yeah, and we feel with this, like, oh, there's not there's enough developers talent. I think this is something that is solvable. And I think I think of a blockchain scalability, right? It's not just the tech, but Thais has a very interesting <laughs> perspective <Yeah>. to this. <laughs> so Thais so, so I think, like, um, if we want to build DeFi, if we want to use, and that means also money, like very valuable transactions, we need to have extremely good governance. We also call it decentralization and control. And you could say all the new projects that create infrastructure in this space, we have... Sui, Cosmos, Aptos, whatever. We have the tagline projects as we are doing. 
we are all trying to solve this trilemma of the infrastructure, basically. So that means you have decentralization. That's like the control component. What is, what is your purpose with your technology? How censorship resistant is needed to be? And you saw what happened to Tornado Cash, like USDC accounts get blocked, what have you. It's a real problem, right? It's not for fun that Bitcoin is designed the way it's designed. It's for censorship resistance. So you actually have, a, you could say, a non-corruptible system. And um, I think that's an extremely important component. Uh, and, 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 and I am corruptible. I think we all are corruptible. We don't need single entities or institutions to have control over the infrastructure. That's a very important point. But that comes to problem with solving then an infrastructure problem like the Byzantines problem. So you have, on the other hand, you have scalability and then you have security. And that's like the trilemma you're trying to solve the triangle. And, and as of my knowledge right now, we don't have any real solution to this. Uh, so we're trying to build like roll-ups, shark roll-ups or whatever. And, and all these solutions are trying to cope with congestion basically in the chain and, and also create scalability and interoperability across uh, platforms. And, and um, I have, I'm deeply down into this. And, and currently, I don't think we are really capable of creating a real alternative to the current financial system because we don't have the good enough components of the infrastructure basically yet. That's where we are today. But I would also say what's happening now out there in open source or in companies for that matter, it's, it's going fast and there's been heavy, heavy amounts invested into database technologies, network protocols. We did it ourselves, uh, like heavily investments. That's because we need other technology components. But at some point in two, three, five years, it will be present. And then we can actually do real DeFi. We can actually create better methods of finance. That's my hope, at least, um, and for better prosperity for everyone. So, so infrastructure right now, we're not there, but we're getting there. It's going quick, and there's a lot of new projects coming up. We also have an Ethereum upgrade. Uh, so so um, yeah, things are happening. Yeah, and I think on the topic, like, we have talked about the problem that everything is not there yet. So what, about, like, what do you think that the blockchain industry should be investing in to make the blockchain there <laughs> in, a, in a faster manner? Oh, uh, that, that's a good question, right? If I knew the, the answer, I think it will be pretty good. Um, but for sure, we need a database system. It's, it's basically just a money database or some kind of database for valuable data, right? And it needs to be non-corruptible. Nobody needs the wrong editing right in this database. So, so that's basically just what we want to do. So I think heavy investments into database and, and network technologies will get us there. And I see a lot of good projects now, uh, like, uh, and also like uh, very early stage projects playing with graph technologies and new database technologies. And I really think that they will be a part of the future, those projects, in the next two to three years. And I think uh, other than just infrastructure, I think this is uh, targeted to John, actually. You know, we, we talked about uh, there's also limitation in the business model in the current space, especially, you know, in the financial space whereby, you know, you do leverage and stuff like that. Um, do you want to, like, give us some insight of how, you know, com companies can use business model as a bit of a, like, or to counter the effect of, like, the insufficiency of the blockchain system at the moment? Uh, sure. Uh, I personally, I'm a... In, uh, I'm excited about two roadmap in a uh, DeFi system. Uh, uh, first one is uh, uh, apply more classic uh, asset class uh, comparing with the DeFi system. Right now, DeFi system also is uh, dealing with a lot of uh, native tokens uh, such as uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana, or stable coin like uh, USDT and USDC. And uh, we already find that the system is uh, quite robust and uh, quite efficient, especially after this uh, institutional crash. Uh, the system can, the system didn't uh, crash and uh, accurate execute more than 10 billion assets in seconds uh, with real-time auditing, which is uh, quite important for this new technology. So, I believe that uh, there's a huge potential in um, in more asset class like equity, bond, real estate. In if uh, sales will be such kind of a comparing a uh, classic asset 
I mean, compared with the uh, crypto system, I, I believe uh, this will be a, a very big opportunity for financial companies. And uh, also, I believe that uh, this is uh, more advanced technology when you compare blockchain with the traditional financial market. Uh, second one is uh, I'm also very excited about how we can apply DeFi or smart contract in a corporate business process. Metroport right now is exploring uh, apply smart contract in our lending business. Uh, so we are a C5 company. We are not a DAO. We are not a DeFi project. But we also find that uh, DeFi is very useful for us. Uh, for example, we have a collateral loan business and we are designing a, a smart contract to manage our collateral, uh, which can really build the credibility for our clients because they can real-time monitor their collateral on-chain. And uh, we consider this is a play, just a, play, a settlement rule in our business model. So uh, in this direction, I also believe there is a huge potential. Uh, it's a uh, protocol can't uh, do everything, but uh, protocols definitely can play a very important role in our uh, business model, especially when you build uh, something really need uh, credibility, really need uh, your client's trust, and uh, using some uh, uh, some protocol to uh, to to play a very important role in your business model. Really, I would say it's uh, really helpful. Okay, and um, I think the big question, you know, like, you know, DeFi, you know, we keep talking about DeFi, right? Like, and uh, we all heard of the lunar crash. So everybody's very uncertain about what's going on with DeFi. So what do you think, so what's next with DeFi? So where we are now and where we are headed to? Um, I, I actually see the crash and what's happening now as a good thing because it's a wash up uh, space period now. Um, it actually uh, will... This process will actually isolate good projects from recycled projects, what we call it. Um, mm -hmm. People just ape each other. Um, and uh, in, in this process, it will help you as users. It will help the investors to know uh, which they should actually pump the money into. Um, and also, you will also um, find out who are the true builders uh, that has the tenacity and the deep belief in the purpose in their project, as opposed to just getting it out, raising the token, uh, and hopefully you make some money out from it. So I, th I, I do see some positives on that. With regard to going in the future for DeFi, I believe um, uh, putting Web3 out and all that, the, the core problem with DeFi, as I've been seen to now, is basically two things, liquidity, or the lack of liquidity. And then where you have liquidity is the quality of the utility. Mm. And that is the main problem. You solve this too, and you've got a solid uh, DeFi project, and it will skyrocket, okay? Um, hodling and basically locking your tokens, staking it, is actually killing DeFi, killing the market, because you're locking it. You know, it's not doing anything. The market cap in DeFi is not big, so we can't afford it. We need volume, we need liquidity. So the, the DeFi projects that come out going forward need to address that, need to think about it. For example, Fluidity, we saw that and we essentially incentivize our user for just transacting. So the moment you move your crypto, you get a yield. You still get your yield out of your trading, but you get an additional yield for just moving it. And the reason why we're doing it is because to encourage liquidity, to encourage movement. And then, of course, the second one is that you want to, to have, because of the governance, you want to have quality people. You want a good utility. How do you encourage good utility through the movement of the token in your tokenomics? Hmm. And that's the challenge, because if you don't do that, what happens is that you will have pump and dumps, you will have big whalers coming in, and you will have another crash. 
things like that, okay? Because there are people who just, that's what they do. They just focus on the push of the token. Um, and projects, I'm, I'm positive because, um, as you can see, the problem is difficult. And it forces builders to actually now think to build on this one. It is technology-based, but it also encompasses a lot of skill. So what we do um, is that through our incentives mechanism, we have a way of identifying A, Sybil attacks. What are Sybil attacks? People who just pushed the tokens backwards and forwards to multiple wallets when they actually own the wallets. It happens rampantly in NFTs, okay? Um, and there is liquidity, as you can see, it's moving. But it's moving with one person and, and, and it's, it's creating an artificial volume. So that is bad utility. So we have a way of basically isolating that, identifying that, isolating that, and then punishing them by making them pay more gas fees. So that's how Fluidity deals with it. There are more projects coming in out elsewhere to deal with this. Um, and uh, uh, this is the way I see the, the future of DeFi is going to do, because if we get this too correct, then the other things that sits on top of it, which is the metaverse, the NFT, um, and, and, and DeFi, DeFi <laughs> um, will then have that kind of robustness, will then have that kind of uh, um, uh, scalability, but with stickiness to the protocol and not people just jumping and hopping here, there. Yeah, you, get, you gave me a lot of good ideas there. I don't, I don't know what, actually where to start. And I actually think it's a good idea we get a cleanup and um, to look at the purpose of what we're doing. And like infrastructure, technically, we also need, like you could say, financial infrastructure. And it's, it's also like high-level infrastructure. And DeFi is not so different from normal finance, actually, in, in many essence. Like if you lock funds, then it's inefficient use of liquidity, and that's not good for anyone. It's pretty bad for the USD when they are locked in big, uh, you could say, um, accounts because they're creating synthetic USDCs, for example. And that's not very smart for the USD system, and you also have extra risk for the holders of USDC, right? Um, so it's actually just, it's, it's not a real good solution if you look at it from a financial point of view. And, and um, I think there we need to also be very honest in this space about what is we actually trying to solve. I mean, trying to encourage synthetic use of protocols for the usage of the protocol's sake. It's not the idea with finance. The idea with finance is actually you have a real economy. It could be a game environment. It could be a supply chain. It could be something else. And then you use finance to make that work. So if I'm a company, I need to get investors in to finance my operations. If I want to export something and it export credits, something like this, right? This is real finance. And this is where I think like DeFi is, is also simple. It's actually, you could actually, as, a, as if I want to save money, I can lend my money out to different kind of risk-based uh, lending pools, whatever. It should be transparent. But also if, if I need basically to, to borrow money, I can do that as well in a very simple and more efficient way than the current market works. That's the idea, right? And, and, that's, and also back to what you mentioned about stable coins. What is a stable coin? Like, that's a funny term, right? When you come from economics, it's like it doesn't make sense because, you know, money is just uh, like a contract we have of can I actually buy utility or, or like commodities from you in the future? Do you want to trade it in this basically arbitrary value, so to speak? And if we create, uh, I, I, don't want, I don't know what to call them, but we need to create like real solutions, real alternatives to the current financial market. And I'm not sure, also we saw the crash with Luna. Um, and, and there was also other kind of uh, protocols, liquidity protocols. You could, we could ask ourselves, what, is, what was actually the purpose? I never really got it. And, and um, it didn't work. And I think we, we need to be very, very honest about what we are trying to achieve. If we want to create a real alternative, better products, basically for companies, savers, then we also need to create real solutions. And, and I, I, don't, uh, I, I see a lot of those projects that doesn't have a real purpose. They're probably going to die now, and that's a good thing. When, when I'm out like in our own project with some of the, you could say, core developers and also other spaces, 
They are there for a reason. They are only there for one reason, actually. They are some of the best engineers in the world, but they are there because they believe we need to give all human beings prosperity in the world. So they want to build a real alternative to the current financial systems. That's the whole idea. And, and I think that's a very important point that comes from the core communities. And that's what we can build on top as well and, and need to remember, right? That's why it started in the beginning as well. Yeah. John, do you have any thoughts on what sticks for DeFi? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, like I said, I think that DeFi is a paradigm uh, to describe or how, tell us how we can construct complex uh, financial activity on chain in some way that uh, as I have two different points about uh, uh, DeFi. First is uh, I, I believe DeFi ecosystem is a totally different uh, ecosystem with the uh, TradeFi field. They have a different uh, principles. Uh, I think uh, the main difference is uh, let the default pay. I think this is something that we haven't saw in TradeFi world. TradeFi world regulations or every component. First, that uh, TradeFi is a permission world, and not everyone can participate. Second, the regulator always think about how I can protect the components. But in DeFi, it's different. So if you build something different, you should follow their different principle. Second is about the stable coins. So this, uh, I will consider stable coin as an excellent uh, application uh, in, uh, in blockchain field. Uh, this is something that really makes this technology uh, associated with uh, uh, normal uh, with uh, billions of people. Otherwise, it's always something that uh, uh, a bunch of people, a bunch of uh, tech people, they love it, they exciting about it, uh, or some uh, some a bunch of people they they believe in that. Oh, okay, I, I believe in Bitcoin, I believe in Ethereum, but you can't real pay Bitcoin and Ethereum for your daily life, right? If you really want to apply this technology with the billions of people, you have to figure out so how we can apply our, uh, how we can apply this uh, technology with, uh, with the currency, with uh, my car, with my house, with everything. So this is uh, another point. So I believe uh, in the future, DeFi is not only something we saw right now, I would say EDFI is uh, something that uh, really can apply in our daily life. And uh, we, billions of people will be in this, this uh, ecosystem. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So I can't imagine like paying for bills with like a Bitcoin because the price fluctuates really a lot. I think we have a little bit of time left. So we've been talking about 2022, right? And I think the, the biggest thing is so what about next year? So my question to you, right? No, not financial advice, by the way. Or uh, so like, if you're going to bet big in 2023, so which area are you the most bullish on and why? Just a quick quick answer. Or do you want to start with either of us? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking. So, okay, one of so, so you can arrow to Thais. <laughs> What's going to be big in the 23? Yeah. Uh, good question. Um, I actually think I see a lot of activity both in the financial banks and also with the merging to crypto within, you could say, the carbon market, the, the sustainability market. Um, I hope a lot of the new ideas on the infrastructure part is going to take off and see if they work. That's at least what, what I'm, I'm hoping to see. Um, yeah, so. Okay. okay, well, well, John, what do you think is the biggest thing in 2023? Uh, I think we may need more time to recover <laughs> from this crash. So I don't think there will be a very big thing happen in next year. But uh, but uh, uh, in next next in next year, I believe that uh, uh, it uh, institutions, especially crypto institution, will become more transparency. People don't trust uh, 
sell this model anymore. So I just give you a interest rate, and you trust me. I can earn the money in the market. I I I think this model already broke. So people have uh, figured out uh, how how I can uh, obtain the trust. How I can really build a credible brand in crypto field. So I I I, I would say that the only way is uh, build the transparency and uh, follow the crypto principle, not a three five. Uh, principle. That's very sound advice. Yeah, I think we we do need a little bit of time to recover. So I don't have you recovered enough. Do yeah, you have the answer? Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm in DeFi. I will answer on DeFi. And um, I I think um, the what I see the market in DeFi and um, is that they are regrouping and restructuring themselves um, to offer DeFi the services that DeFi can do and package it together um, and offer it as a service in a platform. And, and then it's been extended and bridged to uh, traditional finance or CDFIs. Okay? And, um, and so I do see that happening very fast in Europe. Um, one of them is also my startup. We are going to that as well. Um, and uh, I'm hoping and seeing how it will then catch on uh, in the Asian perspective uh, because that means that it is now uh, done in a simplistic manner, safe manner um, for traditional finance to then access um, without having um, the clunkiness that is often as associated in the DeFi space. So I have gotten my answers for 2023. Can we give our speakers a round of applause please? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to our excellent speakers. Now, um, moving on, our next session is titled Unicorns Shaking Up Fintech, New Wave of Future Payments. Before that, uh, let's give our speakers a photo op. That was definitely a future forward session. Was that useful to every one of you? Can I hear yes? Wow, thank you girls. Where is the energy in the room? Can I hear a huge yes? Thank you, thank you so much. All right, next up we're going to have our next